Welcome to a fantastic edition of Rebellion's Educational Series. I'm here with one of my favorite minds, Professor Mike Zida, founder of USC's video game department, has a great eye for the future of gaming, the future of you know, really human leisure and how it's unfolded over the last few decades. Professor, thanks so much for coming on today. Oh, thank you for the invitation. Always great to see you. I, I'd love to learn from you today on the, the meta and the whole meta universe. What are your thoughts on it, general, future, short-term, long-term? Oh, everybody is jumping into the metaverse, but, uh, you know, we, we've seen this before. You know, in, in uh, the earlier, we saw people in the Department of Defense go from visual simulation to games. And all of a sudden, everybody who used to make visual simulation systems started to make games. And now we're seeing everybody's going to jump into the metaverse. And, uh, you know, we see $10 billion of investment from a Facebook slash meta into what they're doing with respect to the metaverse. And we see everyone who's got an online game that uh, has 3D characters and allows you to tailor your own personal characters is now calling themselves the portal to the metaverse. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things have already gone overnight from being games to being the metaverse or a portal to the metaverse. And uh, there's, I, I also hear there's an additional 10 billion of investment from venture capital into metaverse efforts. Right. So there's a ton of money and everything going into it. It's one of the buzziest words right now. It's complete buzzy. You right. know, it's, uh, it's that. And then people are also shoving, you know, cryptocurrency and NFTs into it simultaneously. And, you know, it's, 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 it's sort of buzzword bingo right now. Yes. No, I saw the NBA player who sold a certain amount of copies of his TV uh, or his show, his shoe that he wore on TV, which could then be used in the metaverse. That was uh, last week, the Curry who set the three point limit. Yeah. I mean, you're going to see all kinds of crazy stuff right now. I mean, you know, we've sort of seen this before. We are in what we call the roaring 20s right now. And, uh, you know, the market is way up, everything's way up, and people are taking their money and say, oh, let's put it into metaverse but you know even even when we did virtual reality starting in about 2015 uh we saw you know uh, the oculus company get acquired by facebook and at that time there were 75 different companies making headsets and if you went at that time and said i, I want to make some content for vr and you went to a venture capitalist like, oh, we're just investing in tech and new headsets, and new tracking. We're not investing in content. Well, the consequences, we got to, you know, 2015, 2016, and there was kind of this drought of, you know, people could only build content if they did it out of their money, their own personal pocket on the weekends and in the evenings. There really wasn't that anything to build stuff. So right now, you know, metaverse is, let's take what we have now and just rename it metaverse. And uh, there's some big issues though. Uh, and the tech issues, you know, when you go and I go into say Roblox and I build my own special tailored character mm -hmm. and I love my character and I go and play the Roblox metaverse. What I really like to do is take that character out to another Metaverse I. I'm going to call the multiplicity of the metaverse I because I need a word. I don't want to say metaverse is. That just doesn't sound right. And so when I want to leave Roblox or when I want to leave the Facebook horizon world or the meta horizon world, let's just call it horizons. When I want to leave that, I'd like to take my character that I've spent a whole lot of time and money and effort on building and I'd like to move it to another of the metaverse. I, I'd like it to bring my face, my friends list also. You know, I've got, well, I don't know, over 3,200 something friends on Facebook. I'd like to take them with me to wherever I go with my 3D character and whatever information has been accumulated and built uh, for me under Facebook, I'd like to have that also in there some way in some standardized form. So that when I go to Roblox or I go to something else, that information can be utilized to give me a better experience. You know, some of the things that might be in there 
uh, when I go into Facebook, which is I have a lot of friends who are in the tech world, who are in the computer science world, who are people I've known for many years. And I'd like to bring them in any relationship we have in the packets such that I can then go into this next member of the metaverse I and have a similar experience. And do you see eventually the various metaverse uh, platforms kind of selling real estate for you to build your virtual home on? Well, you know, Second Life did that. You know, the, and, and Second, Second Life had a big business of uh, selling you clothing to put on your avatar and selling you particular piece, per, parts of virtual worlds. And the real question is, 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 is that a value? You know, if we go back to, I think, 19... 94 when all of a sudden we had the mosaic web browser i remember one of my guys coming in paul barham and saying you need to buy zyda.com right now and i'm like why i don't you know my website's here over at the school the naval Hills graduate school and he goes you should buy it now and uh you know i never did i i you know and, and it's funny because about two years ago i went looking for zyda.com it's for sale for twenty five thousand oh. dollars <laughs> It's a lot of money. And uh, so I bought MikeZyda.com, which is just fine by me. But uh, you may be, maybe people are right that there is going to be this business in buying virtual uh, terrain. But, you know, there's going to be a monthly payment or an annual payment of some sort. And the real question is, what do I do there? So yeah. It's sort of like I host a website right now. And that has most of the technical information about me. And now you're saying I need a 3D one that's works in a particular metaverse. And uh, hopefully it allows me to bring that information to the next metaverse. I've got to ask, why has Mark Zuckerberg gone so kind of all in on the metaverse? Uh, and do you think it's a little early to be so all in on the metaverse? I think, I think he's trying to, you know, right now, uh, you know, the uh, Facebook's model during the last presidential election was, you know, uh, basically uh, misinformation as a business model, uh, helping provide a platform for misinformation about the various uh, science and technology and political campaign issues. And they are in trouble for that. And so they would like to change the discussion, the discussion away from, talking about you know how how Facebook really screwed up with respect to the presidential election and uh, a coup attempt as a service uh, to get to the point where while we've got this oculus group we spent a lot of money on it and they've got this oculus quest 2 headset that uh, you know it doesn't cost a whole lot of money and we should really be focused we can get if we say, tell everyone we're focusing on that and we're going to spend 10 billion dollars on that then maybe that changes Congress's interest in us. So in some ways, I think it's that. Very interesting point, Professor. Yeah, I mean, they have been under fire for almost everything the last few months. And to really embrace this kind of new technology makes them a new technology conversation, not a regulations conversation. That's right. Yeah. And we, we you know, so as, as most Americans love the new technology being built and designed and turned into something that people can that get and buy, that's interesting to us, you know, trying to use the Facebook platform to overthrow particular presidential candidates is not very happy for us. All right. So, yes, about, they're, they're going in that direction. Professor, what about the actual uh, virtual reality? I was at a Bloomberg conference maybe right before the pandemic set out, and I liked the offerings that were there by the leading companies. But after maybe 10, 15 minutes, I did feel a little queasy and I, I did want to vacate the services. So right. do, we, do we expect significant technological breakthroughs the next few years where you won't feel sick, you won't get headaches, you know, being in virtual reality will be seamless? Or do you think we're a little, you know, ahead of uh, ourselves here? Well, I, I was the senior editor for the MIT Press Journal Presence for 12 years. And many of our papers were on soapite syndrome, which is what it's called, which is basically, you know, you're, what is the motion sickness that the sickness that you get from wearing a head mounted display. And basically it's your visual system and your occipital system uh, believe you're doing something different. 
And so that's what makes you sick. And, and that's, that is a continuing and will be continuing problem with headsets. All right. And so I think that what's going to happen in terms of the metaverse and in terms of virtual reality is that there, we're going to move, uh, there are going to be always headsets and people like them, but I think people are going to figure out how to turn their iPad screen or their television screen into the portal for their virtual reality metaverse experience. So there's a company, Athanos, uh, right now I'm advisor to Athanos, so I, I know a little bit about the company. And it's figured out how do you turn any OLED television into a stereo experience with your head track with a very lightweight tracker and all you're wearing is a pair of about $15 active shutter glasses. And the experience is pretty cool. And it doesn't make you sick at all. And it's, it's what people should think about doing. Basically, we've invented a way to basically put this on any television that is in your home, if it's an OLED television. That is very cool. That's, you know, going to you know, help with the future where people can stay at home, but socialize at these metaverse bars, metaverse lounges, you know, fall in love with people through the metaverse. Do you think that's a reality? People will meet and fall in love with the metaverse? Well, I think people meet online right now. I mean, you know, what is the latest thing from Facebook is Facebook's finally got into the dating realm, but there's tons of dating websites. In fact, I know the Game Pipe Laboratory in its early days, we got a donation from JDate, the founder of JDate.com because his son went through our program. And so there's just a ton of, you know, Tinder is huge, despite the fact that its reputation is kind of skeezy, right? So I think we're going to get to that same space in virtual reality, of course. But you see Tinder having their own metaverse and people interacting in the Tinder, met Tinder metaverse that have to leave their own. Absolutely. And I think it's going to be even more deceitful than it is now. I mean, now you have to take a picture that reasonably looks like a picture of you. Whereas, you know, in the fact that we're going to build 3D avatars that make us look really cool, that make us look Keanu Reeves or, you know, the other famous movie stars that we have, people aren't going to know who you are and you can kind of act however you want in this metaverse world. And when they meet you in real life, they're going to say, oh, you're overweight and <laughs> you're different than what I saw online. The, all of these things are communication systems. You know, the early work in virtual reality was, you know, this is going to be the virtual way. We, this is going to be the way we communicate with people in the future across the net. And uh, so, so that's, that I think is going to continue. And dating is a huge part of human communication. So how do you see someone like a Microsoft entering the metaverse? I, or are you, are you really not really sure how they would enter the metaverse? So, so Microsoft, uh, you know, initially they bought Allspace VR, uh, which had a, a very interesting metaverse platform. They bought it, I think, in 2017, 2018. I forget the year. And one of my former students was CTO for Allspace VR, Gavin Wilhite, super brilliant guy, cool. did a wonderful job. And they got the technology they got the people for like the two years until they're all got vested and then they all kind of scurried away uh don't see much other than there was something recently about teams immersive which is you know microsoft's attempt to uh, compete against zoom mm. and i think zoom has a dreadful interface but if you want to see a worse interface you run teams the and teams is terrible part. Teams is terrible. I haven't found anybody like it yet, but you can go find some really interesting, uh, you know, matrix of multiple people's faces where a couple of them are avatar, are 3D avatar heads. And the 3D avatar heads seem to have moving lips, and moving eyes and moving heads, which means the camera is aimed at somebody and tracking them and turning it in real time into this moving avatar. That's very cool. So Microsoft's got a lot of smart folks. They've got a lot of internal technology, but that seems to be what I hear about right now. Do you, you think Roblox would make sense for them as an acquisition of them? No, didn't they buy Mi Mi uh, Minecraft? Did they buy yeah. Minecraft? Okay. Yeah, I think Microsoft owns Minecraft, if I recall correctly. I could be wrong. Um, Did you see maybe a Google then buying Roblox? Uh, you know, but wouldn't, you know, Microsoft could buy Roblox. No. 
you know, they could buy, they have sufficiently large sum of money, they can buy just about anything they want. I don't know if they have the, the leadership that will understand how to make this happen or what they should get. Mm. You know, I think Microsoft has traditionally, uh, you know, founded its own game studios and built its own games there. And it has to be a real big, you know, real big deal for them to go reach out and buy a studio, and then bring it in, and then be able to keep it in stable enough state so that all the leads don't leave. Okay. And my my last uh, question today is about this kind of new internet that uh, Mark Andreessen was arguing with. Um, uh the twitter founder about and whether it will be ethical and uh, do you know much about this new internet can you comment well on you know so so a lot of people are calling the metaverse web 3.0 yes I think web in my 3. Article, that's exactly what i'm curious about i think in my article i called it web 4.0 because i i was thinking it wasn't going to happen that fast other unless we just renamed everything the metaverse yeah. but th there's always this desire to turn uh, the, you know, to replace the internet with something better and, 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 and all of that, but it's a massive undertaking. And if we take all of the websites and all of the commerce that we do now on the internet and say, we're going to move it to web 3.0, it's going to have full 3D interfaces, everyone's going to have an avatar character. This is decades away, right? Gotcha. That's what so, I want to yeah. No. So, so yeah, when people, you know, there's certainly things that need to be re-engineered about the internet and they get done over time slowly and we don't necessarily need to call it web 3.0. The metaverse seems to be kind of attached to that. Well, last, last question before I let you go. What sure. are you most excited about these days for 2022? Oh, wow. 2022. I mean, I, you know, there's, there's so many cool technical issues. All right. So if you think about the metaverse and you really think about what is the networking infrastructure and the standardization that has to be done to make it so that everyone can actually uh, go on onto the metaverse, then I think that's very exciting to me from the technical standpoint. All right. So I, I my historical background is I, I spent 12 years working very hard in how do you network visual simulation systems and games. And right, you know, some of the early efforts in metaverse is just take a game online infrastructure and repurpose it and make it call it the metaverse. Mm -hmm. But if you're really going to be an open world where we can move from one metaverse to the next metaverse to the next metaverse, there are some quite challenging issues. So that's very interesting. I'm also very excited about uh, the, uh, you know, Athanos company and how do you turn your television into your portal to the virtual world. I think that has bigger legs than selling lots of headsets that make people sick. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, this was a lot of fun, Professor, and Happy New Year's to you, and I, I really appreciate your time, as always. Happy New Year to you, and great to see you as well. Great to see you, too. Bye-bye.